You know what get me is that, you know, I know somebody said, well then, brother, I stepped on your toe, but you ain't tell me you stepped on I stepped on you. But it wasn't them your feet that dropped on top of my toe? Okay. Why well, I got to go to you and tell you that you stepped on my toe? That's why the Bible said, well, brother, sister, have all against you. You supposed to go to them Come on. and deal with that situation. Amen? Amen. Not wait till they come to you. You supposed to go to them and deal with that situation. Let's go to the word of God today. We're dealing with a subject of prayer or pray without ceasing. Amen. And like I said, we need to pray sometime until we feel like it hurts. You need to pray until it hurts you. Get you out of your bed. I perceived in my spirit even while I was back there. That was some folks saying, when they gonna stop praying? I'm getting tired of them praying. See, that was the devil. Come on, pal. See, if the devil was riding your back and say, I came to church today and they praying too much. I, you came to church and they praying too much. See, you used to go to church and they praying too much. I said, you used to go to church and they're playing, not praying. See, the problem is that the church for a day is playing church. Amen. Matthew chapter number 21. Amen. And verse number 13. Can whenever get that, please say amen. Matthew 21 and verse 13. Whenever you get that, please say amen. Amen. Somebody read it for me. If you got to go ahead and read it loud and distinctly. If not, I'm going to read it whenever I get there. Matthew chapter 21 and verse number 13. I'm now down. And he said unto them, Is it written? It, 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 is, okay, it is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer. But you made a dim line, a dim of thieves. See, in other words, men in their craftiness, men in their cunningness, men in their, in their mentality to profit gain has made the house of God a den of thieves. But he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Shall be called a house of prayer. So if you're doing anything in the house of God other than praying, it is suspect. Amen. Some of the things that we say in the house of God ain't no God. Some of the words that we preach in the house of God ain't no God. Because it's something. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 19 and verse number 46. I'm going to be skipping around a little bit. Let you know that the house of God shall be called out of prayer. I went to church over there and the only thing they done was pray most of the service. Amen. That's what they're supposed to do. See, it is so foreign for us. It is so far for us to go to church and they don't do nothing but they have a prayer service. It is so we and we wonder why the, the devil is, is wreaking havoc in the church. We wonder why all these kind of spirits is hanging around our children, hanging around the church, hanging around our family because we ain't praying enough. Come on, Jesus. Amen. Luke chapter nineteen and verse forty-six. Amen. Luke nineteen and verse forty-six. And he said unto them, it is written again. You just read it in more. Matthew chapter 21, but he said it again. It is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. See, when he came into the temple of the third wide round, verse 22, when he came, he said, saying, if thou hast known, okay, let's drop down a little bit. And it says, and he went into the temple, verse 45, and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that brought them. Saying, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. See, but he had to, he, he turned on take that thought, he was out of his mind. He got a switch in another place, and he whipped them folks out of the house of God. Amen. Let's go to the Matthew chapter 26. Back down, back up, back up to Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41. A couple of pages back. Amen. Told you I'm going to be bouncing around a little bit. But it's an important that we begin to pray, saints. See, you need to begin to pray because I believe it's so I perceive in my spirit that somebody been in the flesh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The flesh has been ruling. The flesh has been ruling and God ain't pleased. And verse number 40, 26 and 41 says, and it says, verse 40, and he, and he coming unto his disciples and finding them asleep and said unto Peter, what could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh, but your flesh 
But your flesh is a mess. But your flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak, baby. Amen. So he told them to do what? Watch and pray. Let's make a little bit. Let's, let's, let's confirm this word. Go to Mark, Mark chapter 14 and verse 38. See what he says in that chapter. Mark chapter 14 and verse 38. Amen. Somebody's been praying. You've been talking too much and you've been praying too little. See, that's today's church. We talk way too much and we pray way too little. Jesus. And I said unapologetically. Oh my goodness, we, it's the truth. If we be true with ourselves and not everybody, and we talk way too much and we pray way too little. Hallelujah. And we thank God don't see. Baby, God see. And it fixes the spirit of God when we do that. Mark chapter 14 and verse 38, verse 37. And he coming to them and find them sleeping, sleeping, amen? Everybody got to get their rest, amen? And he said unto Peter, Peter, sleeping thou, could it thou not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but your flesh, but the flesh is weak. I don't know about you, but I feel something come out of me this week. What about you? And I need something put back in me. Jesus. See, y'all looking at me like y'all have crazy. I don't mean, some people, I ain't talking about all y'all, but some of y'all. What you talking about, Pastor John? What you talking about, Pastor? I feel a part of me was taken away. Jesus. In the natural and in the spirit realm. And I needed to, I needed to be restored. I need to be renewed. I needed something put back into me. I don't know about you, but I needed something put back into me. Hallelujah. And the way to get it is by prayer and by fasting and by seeking God. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter number 18, verse 1 through 8. Amen. Let's go to the word of God. Amen. And the word of God is saying, he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men are always to play. Is that what it's saying? No, it's saying pray. And not to faint. No matter what you're doing, you better be praying while you're doing it. Saying, there was in a city a, a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men, man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him and said, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, and nor regard man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, leave by a continual coming. She get on my nerves. She weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what that unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect which cried day and night unto him? And we got along with them. And he said this last verse. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Amen. Somebody need to pray hard and pray long. You need to pray into your flesh, get under subjection to the Spirit of God. Man, I'm not getting my, my, I say stuff sometimes I know I'm in reflecting when it comes out of my mouth, it, it don't even feel right. Something we could have just kept in our mouth and in our heart. Lord, once again. See, you are you clean as long as it's in your mouth. And it's in your know, you, you know, you can go to God and say, Lord, take this out of my heart. But once it comes out of you, once it comes out of you, it defiles you. It makes you unclean. And not only will I know you unclean, but everybody around you will know you unclean. Not only will you know that Pastor Jones is unclean, because of what I say, everybody around me will know it too. Hallelujah. So you need to pray that, that some of that junk in your heart come out. Come out. I'm talking to church folks now. The Bible says, if my people that are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their righteous ways, 
No, oh, baby, the Bible said evil ways. Right. Some of my people, he said, some of those folk called by my name yeah. is full of the devil. Got the, I ain't going to say they got, they ain't the devil, God forgive me for saying that. They got the devil in their flesh. Yeah. See, they got the devil in the flesh. Are they in the flesh? No, they got the Holy Ghost and they got the Holy Ghost. But they're in the flesh. They got some evil ways. Have you ever met somebody that's filled with the Holy Ghost and treated you like trash? Has you ever met anyone who claims to be speaking in tongues and running around the church and speak and treat you like that? Because they got some evil ways. See, we need to pray until the evil ways get out of us. We need to pray until that little gospel spirit get out of our back. We need to pray till we stop thinking evil. We need to pray till we walk into the gift of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the goodness, the challenge, the meat, the faith, the terror. Praise the Lord. We need to pray. Have you ever anybody say they say fit me as a rouse My Lord, treat you like dirt. But they say, they say, they jump shot all over my feet, don't even say I'm sorry. They're my feet. I love you, brother, but sister, you just, can't you jump and shout over there? Because you keep on jumping and shouting over here, on top of my feet. Let's go to the word. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. I want us really to pray until we really feel a breakthrough in the flesh. I really feel today that some of y'all was praying and y'all was getting something from the Lord. And there's some people that are saying, like, what, what are they doing? What, what, what are they doing? They was praying. They was praying. But today, church, we so used to going to church and being entertained. We let the preacher preach to us a good hominutic word and didn't he do it and and the Lord is sure going to make a way. And we on our way to Hades. While they still preaching the same old, the same old sermons that have been heard for centuries. And have sent our people to Hades. Instead of telling them to repent. To cast away sin and to get baptized in Jesus' name. And to get filled with the Holy Ghost and to live right and to walk right. And to put off the works of the flesh. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 and verse 17. Amen? The Bible says pray without ceasing. Simple. Pray without ceasing. You got to learn how to pray without ceasing. Amen? You got to learn to pray when it hurts. Don't feel like praying. I got a headache. I don't feel like pray anyway. Amen? Amen. Pray without ceasing. When y'all was shouting in that church yesterday, some people looking at y'all like they had lost their mind. Baby, you had a sanctified funeral. I don't know what to tell you. If you didn't want to experience this, you shouldn't have showed up. Yes, they're going to be jumping and shouting. Yes, they're going to be in your face jumping and shouting. Yes. That's a, that's a sanctified funeral. Yeah. Now, if you go to one of them New Orleans funerals and they start doing the second line, going up and down with that cat, baby, you want to look at them like they crazy. Why are you looking at us like we crazy? My goodness. You had a sanctified funeral, they're going to shout. They're going to jump. They're going to speak in some tongues. and They're going to do all that. Let's go to the Word. Amen? So, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. That's what God was doing yesterday. In the midst of their pain, he was giving thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit. Despise not prophesy. And it goes on and on and on and on. Amen? Let's go to James chapter 5, verse number 16. James chapter 5, and verse 16. Amen? Amen. It's the line. It says, confess your faults one to another, and pray ye one for another, that you may be healed. Oh, Lord. Saints, whenever you do something wrong, say I've done it wrong. Don't wait to leave. Don't wait to. Pastor Jones, you know, I just talked about you. And, you know, hey, you might want to take God. That's God. I might be looking at you having me cock out. Like, you just talk about me. Okay. I said, all right. I remember telling this pastor, I said, we was, we was talking about you. We was all talking about you. I bowed up and told that man, we all been talking about you. He thought of one of the reasons I say, no, nah, man. No, Pastor, I've been talking about you too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my mama said, you're talking about this, you're thinking about me. All right, so I ain't worried about it. But I'm just trying to say, if you've done something that you know is wrong against your brother or sister, tell them. Please, we can't.
can't jump and shout over sin. Amen. We can't jump and shout over jealousy and unforgiveness and hatred and malice. Amen. Please, saints, we, it's enough fakeness in the church world today. They do that all the time. Yes. People jump and shout and they know they treated you wrong. They jump and shout and they know they've done this and that. Don't be like that. I ain't saying you gotta go up before the whole church and tell the whole church. But go to that individual and that individual by themselves and talk to them. Amen. Amen. And win them. Amen. If you think you've done wrong, go to them and tell them. Amen. This could be your last time for real. Matthew chapter, while we're in that chapter, it says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you might be healed, that you may be healed. It makes me wonder if you don't do this part, God ain't going to hear you. Some of the stuff that we experience, and I ain't talking about physically, I'm talking about mentally also and spiritually, is because we're not confessing our faults one to another. But you gotta be careful when you confess it to. You can't confess it to talk and sad to talk and sad and tell your business all over the place. Amen. But find someone in order to keep a secret, amen? And tell them what's going on. You know, I was so mad at Pastor Jones. You know, my goodness, he came to church, and the only thing he wanted to do was pray. You might want to go to God with doubt. If I were you, I would go to God before I go to my sister with doubt because you might get rebuked. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and Elijah was a man subject to passion as you were, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain for the space of um, three years and, and six months. And he prayed again, and, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth for fruit. Saints, we got to learn how to pray. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 5. Let's go there real quick. And then we're almost done. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 5. Thanks, so I'm praying one for you, gentlemen. Because the Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. That's what it says, right? Yes. Amen? Yes, Lord. Got to pray, saints. And you got to be righteous, too. Somebody read before me. 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 7 and verse 5. Keep reading, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. 7 and 5, I'm sorry. I got it wrong. 7 and 5. You had it right. You had it right. 1 Corinthians 7 and 5. You had it right. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent. For a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. Married couples, you gotta put some time and give God some time even though you're married. You don't want to honor your husband or your wife over Jesus. Sometimes you gotta say, I gotta fast me. I gotta go somewhere and pray. You sleeping by yourself tonight. <laughs> Y'all think I'm joking. Get, get consent, but do that. So I ain't talking like, no, no, I'm just being real. See, if you don't get what you need from the Lord, the devil can come in and clean your clock. See, if you don't get what you need from the Lord, the devil can come in and rob you. Oh, did I say that? Let me say it again. Make sure you got it. It says what? Defraud you not what? One, not one the other. One and other. Except it be with consent for a time yes. that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontency. Sometime, Mary Cole, you got to decide. We're going to have a prayer life. We ain't going to do nothing tonight. We ain't going to do nothing on this night. We ain't going to do nothing on that night. We're going to seek the Lord. Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm all in your business, ain't I? Yeah. I'm trying to keep you how to stay saved. How to stay safe. Don't put that man before God. Amen. Don't put that woman before God. He don't understand, pal. You better give him some understanding. Right. <laughs> give him some understanding. Say, I'm doing this for the Lord. It ain't going to be all the time. Uh, don't say I'm praying and fasting all the time. Because the Lord, you're going to cause some trouble in your marriage. <laughs> but sometimes, when you know the devil is coming against you, you might need to seek the Lord. Huh? I showed, I heard a lot of amens on that. I heard one over there. Thank you, Jesus, for that one amen. 
But I'm telling you the truth. Because we got to be sensitive. I'm picking up in the spirit realm that some of us ain't sensitive in the spirit. We not sensitive in the we not We're losing our sharpness in the spirit. We're not, we're not able to hear the voice of God the way we used to. Like we used to. Yeah. Some of y'all, God was dealing with y'all and showing y'all a lot of stuff. Even prophetically, and you, you begin to get dull in that prophetic. Is it because we ain't praying enough? Is it because we ain't fasting enough? Is it because we're not in that word enough? Is it because we, world, we love this world too much? I seldom watch television, y'all. Y'all don't seldom watch television. Don't want this colossal waste of my time. Now you do what you want to do. It is a colossal waste of my time. Usually me and Mama they begin to watch a movie, the movie is watching us. And try, in the process about 30, 45 minutes. What was that? Did you see that? Some of y'all got y'all television on too much and you ain't seeking God enough. You ain't praying enough. You ain't fasting enough. And if I'm talking to you, that's between you and God. But if I were you, I'll cut that one-eyed monster off sometime. And I would get in my Bible and I would pray. Let's go to the Word of God. I didn't say it was a sin to watch television. I said, don't make that your God. Last scripture, then we're done. Matthew chapter number 18 and verse number 20 to 21. I came over your house, pal, John. Y'all watch TV. Them kids probably watch TV. Because I do let them watch TV. And sometimes I gotta tell them to cut that junk off. Amen. Tell them now. Y'all need to tell them to kids sometimes. Go do whatever you gotta do. Do your chore. Amen. Amen. We're done almost. Matthew chapter number 18 and verse 20 and 21. We're done. We thank God for prayer today. I feel better from prayer. I feel restored in the spirit realm. Amen. I feel God has replaced something that inside of me that needs to be replaced and stirred something. And I I can honestly tell you, I feel something go out of me when I was praying back then, Mom. I feel something like just go out of me. Okay, let's go to the Word of God. Matthew chapter number 18 and verse 20. Somebody got it before we go ahead and read it. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. I said verse 3, I meant verse 20. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20. Let's go ahead and read it. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? I do apologize. It's 17 and verse 20. 17, I'm sorry. 17 and verse 20. I, I wrote it down on 17 and verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Verse 21. Howbeit, this kind goeth not out by, but by prayer and fasting. All his bowed, all eyes closed. Amen. We thank God today for the word. Is there anyone that just want prayer for anything? Please come.